been a recent controversy in California. Um, a court has recently um, decided, ruled, that homeschooling without certified teachers uh, is a violation of the Constitution. I wondered what your opinion is on that, particularly since homeschooling movement in this country <clears throat> is generally an excuse for indoctrination of children and fundamentalism. I always have to be a bit careful when wading into uh, local American politics, not, <laughs> not living here and not knowing what the underlying issues are. If the underlying issue is, as you've suggested, one of indoctrinating children in religious fundamentalism, that does, I must confess, uh, embolden me to, uh, to say something which I might not otherwise have said if... Uh, if I had thought that homeschooling was a completely different issue. So is that really right, that the whole point of homeschooling is... No. No, okay. So, so what, what other reasons are there for homeschooling? Bad schools. Bad schools, okay. Okay, well, I think it's clear what I would think if it was an issue of religious fundamentalism, and it's not clear what I think given that I don't know what the real issues are. So um, I will uh, retreat behind uh, a facade of not being an American. And... Hi, um, I'm a big fan, by the way. Um, my question to you is something that's a little bit more of a philosophical history. So oftentimes I've heard you say on YouTube, for example, that the, the reason that the whole hypothesis that God created the universe is a non-starter because God would have to be more um, complex than the universe is. Um, I would just like to know what your uh, um, objection would be to someone such as like medieval um, theologian like Thomas Aquinas who would say that God's actually something very simple but powerful so that that might be another alternative. I'm, I'm an atheist so I don't buy something like that but I'd just like to understand your objection to a claim like that. It is an utterly preposterous idea that the God who not only creates the universe, which you'd think would be something you'd need to have, have a fairly good knowledge of physics and mathematics um, in order to do, not only does that, but listens to the prayers of every one of six billion people simultaneously, such bandwidth, <laughs> forgives their sins, knows when they're thinking evil thoughts, worries about their sexual proclivities. How could anybody seriously suggest that such a being who's capable of doing all the things that are attributed to him could possibly be simple? If God is simple, this is really what I was saying right at the beginning when I said if you want to make God equal to energy or Planck's constant, that's fine. Make him simple, make him the bare minimum that you need in the way of physical constants, let's say, in order to get the universe going. If that's what God means to you, that's fine. But then you're totally wasting your time praying to him, <laughs> sucking up to him, <laughs> asking forgiveness from him, expecting him to make you survive your own death. You cannot have it both ways. Either God is simple, in which case he's not worth worshipping, or he's complex, in which case he doesn't exist. <laughs> Hi. Obviously, uh, religions have a vested interest in gaining more worshippers and uh, spreading their own ideas. Um, I was kind of surprised in the God delusion that you, you didn't address kind of the mimetic nature of religion. And... Um, possibly speculate on the basis of mimetic immunity, if you will, to uh, religion. You know, any correlates that uh, actually prevent people from uh, becoming religious. Well, there, there, there is a certain amount of mimetics in the God delusion. Um, uh, perhaps not as much as some people would wish, perhaps more than other people would wish. Um, I think there's about half a chapter on it. Uh, I... I suppose the mimetic approach would be to say that uh, religious ideas might not be deliberately crafted by cynical priests 
uh, in the interests of their own well-being or the well-being of their, uh, their, 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 their church, whatever it is. But religions might simply grow by a kind of natural selection, not a genetic natural selection, a mimetic natural selection, a natural selection of ideas in the meme pool, ideas in the pool of ideas. So the reason why so many religions believe in life after death in, by this model would be that life after death is an appealing idea, and therefore when people hear somebody say, you're going to survive your own death, they say, oh, that's good, I'll go and tell somebody else about that. And so <laughs> the idea spreads. So popular ideas, ideas that people enjoy, spread in the same way as popular tunes spread, good tunes spread, when people whistle them, other people pick them up and whistle them too, whereas a bad tune would not spread. So that would be a, a mimetic approach to the explanation of religion. It gets a lot more complex than that too. The idea of a meme complex, or uh, memeplex, as it has been called. A, to explain that, I, I need to go back to gene complexes. Genes in natural selection, you know that natural selection is fundamentally all about the differential survival of genes in gene pools. The simple way to express that is to say that genes survive in the environment provided by the world, by the trees, by the predators, by the diseases, and so on. But probably the most important part of the environment in which a gene survives is the other genes in the gene pool of the species. Because it's those other genes that the genes that are being selected have to be compatible with. So that every gene is being selected not only for its ability to make a good coat of hair or a good anti-predator behavior, but is being selected for its ability to survive against the background of the other genes in the gene pool, genes which, on average, it's going to have to share bodies with. And maybe the same thing happens with memes. Maybe there are meme complexes, just like gene complexes. Maybe the whole of, say, the Roman Catholic Church is a, a, is a, is a meme complex. It's a group of memes which, while not necessarily having high survival value in themselves, they do have high survival value against the background of each other, in the context of each other, in the meme pool provided by the other Catholic memes. So that's another application of memetics to the study of religion. Those are both in the God delusion. Yes. It's kind of high. <laughs> Good evening, Professor Dawkins. I wanted to first thank you for making yourself so accessible to the students here, um, coming somewhere close by that I could come see you. Um, I also love Root of All Evil, by the way. Um, my question to you is, there was a survey that was recently conducted that basically the results were a huge majority of people would not vote for a president who claimed or stated that they were atheist. I, I don't know if you heard of the study that was conducted here in America. And it, it sparked kind of a controversy at my school. There were lots of columns written about why people wouldn't vote for an atheist president. And I wanted to ask you what you make of such a result and what you think about the culture of a society that would not vote for an atheist president. It's not quite true to say that a huge majority wouldn't vote for an atheist president. What is true is that if you ask a, a number of things like a, a, like a woman, a gay, a black, a Jew, a, or an atheist, Atheists come bottom of, the, of that pecking order. It's not that a majority wouldn't vote for them, it's just that more people would not vote for an atheist than would not vote for any of those other uh, categories of person. Um, and certainly if you look at presidential candidates in this election and any past election that I can remember, uh, it is true that uh, candidates for election in this country seem to feel a need to mention God uh, in every speech. 